Just to know that Mr. Nays did submit uh, PowerPoint presentations. He did uh, submit them in accordance with our 24-hour policy, and I believe he's pulling those up right now. Yeah, I think you've got them all. But my name is Larry Nays, and uh, just FYI, uh, I need glasses to see where the heck it is. It's a little bit higher, and you'll you'll get there. Where do I get the slideshow? Come on. Oh, there we are. Sorry. Okay. Bingo. Um, <coughs> We've lived out in Elk Grove now for 10 years, recently retired uh, from Lockheed Martin in Palo Alto. I worked at the research lab. Uh, my responsibility was developing cryogenic coolers for space flight instrumentation. The good news is uh, this discussion has absolutely nothing to do with that. Uh, <laughs> I what feel I like to hear more about it. <laughs> we can talk about it if you like. But anyway, uh, we uh, have a neighborhood watch group that joined uh, primarily for the uh, Constellation Park area. And uh, they were pretty active for a while. And uh, I got involved in that. And what we did was we tracked the crime in the area. And I started doing this in like the 2016 time period. And when we have some interested people. And what I will do is I will send that out to the people who signed up by email. And uh, lately, uh, in, in concert with some of the work that Nathan's been doing, uh, with some of the feedback that I've got, they wanted to see trends. And so I've been plotting some trends as, as, as well. And what we've found is, just to give a, a bottom line, is over the last 24 months, it's been pretty flat, not too bad. But that also reflects a significant increase from t years prior to that. And about that same time, we noticed that there was an increase of about 13% uh, in police. And so the question is, are we keeping up with the crime rate? We want to, you know, basically, well, we, you know, I'm here to support the crime with the police. Um, I'm not going to go over any of these things in detail. You, you, you got them, you can take a look at them, but this is the, this is the neighborhood within which we, we, uh, um, we, we, we share the report. Uh, I, I identify the stuff that's basically of interest to me, being parochial. Uh, I live very close to uh, uh, Constellation Park, so that's at the, the dark yellow there. And so we summarize that stuff. Um, i then also gone in and I've identified neighborhood zones, which is in blue, and then uh, since we got to go to the store and buy stuff, um, that's the red, some more uh, your, your business areas, if you will. And what we do is we, we track that by, by, uh, by crime rate, and again, this is from crimereports.com. I don't, I don't try to do anything with the data, I don't massage the data, I just pull the data off the, off, off the, uh, off the computer. Um, what I do do, though, is typically I don't do it on the first of the next month. What I do is I wait about a week or so, let some of the high-frequency noise get off the line, and what I do is I, I document it at that point. And we create plots. And I'm not going to go through all this stuff, but we basically try to keep track of the different uh, by the crime rate by, as a function of time by, by partitioned out by the types of crime. You can see theft is by far the biggest one. Theft being larceny, car theft, which is amazing. We have a lot of car thieves around here. Uh, theft, theft from cars. And we have a lot of forgery and uh, counterfeiting. And I guess that runs true to me because uh, I'm a victim. And this is more partitioning by zones. And th then what I did was I basically counted everything up. This is a total. And it doesn't distinguish between an assault or a drunken disorderly. It's the total events that happened. And what you can see is that how did that happen so quickly? <laughs> you can just sum it up, please wrap it up. Thank you. Um, it, it, we are pretty flat. Oh, this is over the last 24 months. But here's the same data, and this goes back a little bit further now, back into the early time frame. And you can see that what we've done is we've had kind of a step function, if you will, increase in the 2016 time frame, and then that brought it up to that. And so the question is, is that, okay, fine, we've, we've gone to a different plateau, and we've increased, increased the amount of police, and that's helped out quite a bit, but could we be doing more to bring the crime rate back down, if you will? And so the, the summary on this is, yeah, yay, yeah, verily. We've been pretty flat over the last two years, and by the way, I made that chart showing that specifically because I had a meeting with uh, Officer Albright, and he pointed out the fact that the crime rate was pretty much flat in the last two years, and so we, we acknowledged that as well. But still, we'd like to see a little bit of a higher police rate. It's actually Captain Albright. You just demoted him. <laughs> How about King? Can we say King? <laughs> I don't know the titles, guys. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, personal story. Uh, this also hit me. Um, evidently, I'm able to get loans in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and all sorts of places because I've had my identity stolen. 
But I actually had one that was stolen. It was pretty local too. It was a PayPal loan over here in, uh, by the Costco. In, in, in. And uh, I reported it. Uh, well, LifeLock found out about it. I reported it and I said, you know, geez, what I'd like to do is I'd like to put the cuffs on this guy and you know, let's go through it. And, uh, you know, let's give the guy the money and then, then let's lock the guy up. But the response was, we just didn't have the resources to do that. And I can understand that too. But if the comments were, we don't have the resources, the detective was overbooked. And so, you know, the way I look at it, I'd like to see people put in jail for things if they're doing things wrong. Um, I'm gonna go over real quickly here, uh, these guys here. Uh, this is basically a theme is that we appreciate some police officers' actions on the street. Um, the first one basically shows a corner in our neighborhood and as you can see, some guys just love the fire hydrant. And they just, I think they were totally in love with the doggone thing, but uh, they, we just couldn't get them away from it. Um, funny thing is, is that if you take a look at this car on the red over here, that's the only car in any of these pictures of cars on the street that aren't associated with one house. And that house is a rental. There are five couples live there. And they have a lot of fun stuff there. So I hate to interrupt you, but you've gone over two minutes and 43 seconds. Can you wrap okay. it up, please? Thank you, officer, whoever did it, because uh, he cleaned it up. And uh, I want to thank uh, Councilmember Hume here, because I, report, I sent him these charts, and I pointed out the fact that we had a water leak. And just because of the fact that I sent this to him, we had somebody out there the next day repairing that line. So I take full responsibility for making that happen. So there you go. <laughs> all right, that's all, guys. That's all funny. Right. Councilman Hume took responsibility. <laughs> Well, he and I are going to have to fight over who's responsible. For hey, if you can't beat me up, shut up. That's what the sticker on the car said. You want me to go back to that one? That was no. Different. Yeah, I know. That's exactly what that one said, right there. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Frank Frino. Following Frank. Hello, Mayor, uh, City Council, uh, City staff. Thank you. Um, I want to start off by thanking you for what you guys have done really well with my neighborhood um, a lot of staff work going into dealing with the problem house that we have in our our neighborhood um, part part of dealing with that started getting me researching into police staffing levels and crime rates uh, because of my perception that uh, violent crime um, d despite you know general decreases in crime of about two percent year over year, um, what I'm seeing in data is that we actually have violent crime, uh, a subset you know, of the general crime, violent crimes on the rise. Um, the uh, data that I have from the FBI uniform crime reports shows an uh, increase from 2016 uh, when compared with the Elk Grove Police Department annual report uh, shows that aggravated assaults are up 5.4 percent from 2016 to 17. Um, I also experienced a lot of slow response times and reluctancy of uh, police officers to take reports when I needed to make a call or wanted to file a police report. Um, you know, obviously, police times, uh, police response times are slower when there's not enough police. Uh, to handle all the calls that are coming in. Um, I, I really like our police department and no way am I trying to insinuate that we have like lazy police officers or something. I just think that there's way too many calls um, and you know they get backed up and are going from call to call to call and if you're not the highest uh, priority call then you can wait for hours or maybe a day and a half. Um, <clears throat> So I conducted an analysis of the uniform crime reporting uh, data from the FBI, and I gave that to uh, Ms. Brenda Haggard to um, have on file for your review. What I found is, is that uh, Elk Grove is average for uh, violent crime in 2016. They're uh, 17 out of 39 um, when, when we compare uh, similarly sized cities in California. Um, that they have more aggravated assaults in 75% of similarly sized cities uh, and 60% of all the, when compared with all the cities 
that um, report. I did uh, just have a discussion with the police chief right before this meeting uh, where he let me know that uh, based on some analysis or, or review of data that they did today, uh, that he believes that the Oak Grove Police Department is uh, over-reporting and that uh, some of that <coughs> aggravated assault data is uh, information that is not required by law or by definition to be uh, reported. Um, but get to the staffing, uh, since my time's about up already. Um, in 2016, Elk Grove had 128 officers, according to these reports, which is 0.75 officers per 1,000 residents. That was the least number of police uh, per capita out of all similarly sized cities in California. Um, it's 2018 now, and the data shows that there's 146 officers currently, uh, which is 0.84 officers per 1,000, which if we compare it to the rest of the city's 2016 data, shows that we're now tied for the number two spot for the least number of police officers of similarly, similarly sized cities. Um, I heard somebody say, yeah, but we have a lot of uh, civilian staff um, and stuff like that. So in 2016, uh, our Elk Grove Police Department had 243 total staff. So that's police officers plus civilian staff, which placed us at number seven out of 39. So in the bottom 20% of all similarly sized city uh, police staffing. Um, now in 2018, um, we have 146 officers plus 86 civilians is the last thing that I saw on your guys' website uh, for 232 staff, which puts us at 1.34 staff members per thousand uh, residents. So that puts us at, when compared with 2016 data of the other cities, puts us at number 10 out of 39 for total staffing in the bottom 25%. So what I'm asking of uh, the city is um, to take a really hard look at our officer staffing. I believe that we need to support our Elk Grove Police Department with the correct number of people. Um, I have heard, because I've had many conversations with uh, some of the uh, city council members and also with the police department, um, I've heard that we have a plan to hire four officers per year, but um, our city is gonna be reaching 200,000 population really soon. Um, at 200,000 people to achieve a 0.95 ratio of officers to uh, residents, uh, which is about what Roseville has, we need 190 sworn officers. And we're currently at 146, so it's quite a deficit. I don't think we're gonna make it there by hiring four officers uh, per year. Um, so, in, in summary, what I'm asking is for the city council to maybe do a, a fully transparent report uh, back to the constituents as to where our staffing levels are, what our population's projected to be, what the city council thinks uh, an appropriate ratio of police officers to residents is, and what the plan is for us to get there, if that would be okay. Vice Mayor, yeah, come. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Actually, I, I'd, I'd like to direct the question to Chief Noblet if he could speak to some of these points. Where where would you like me to start, Vice Mayor? There was quite a, that, was quite a, that was quite a package of information. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, from the budget, you you and I had had conversations before about staffing plans, and so maybe we could shed some light on how you go about planning the staff, and then you know, how you recommend um, the, the rate of staffing to the, to the council for adoption in the budget each year and what your sure. challenges are, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Um, and, and I did, uh, Mr. Champion and I have met previously, and we've, we've talked through some of these things as well, but for the benefit of everybody else that's here, um, I'd be happy to go into that. So uh, a couple of years ago, in 2016, the police department commissioned a staffing study uh, through the University of North Texas. And uh, we actually hired these consultants to come in and to look at our operation at the time. Um, 
and, and as well as take a look into the future, uh, projecting what, not just growth of the department, but they looked at our services that we provide to and compared those against industry standards um, and, and other studies that they had done throughout the country to, to not just look at um, you know, how we need to grow, but how we actually function. Um, so as it relates to growth, because I think that's really what we're talking about here tonight, um, they, what they recommended was uh, that we did need to add staff and that we were in fact undersized for a city our size. And I don't think that comes as any secret to anyone. We've all had discussions about, about our, our staffing. Um, so the, the staffing study uh, presented to us about a five to six year uh, plan for growth, uh, for strategic in incremental growth that would eventually get us to a point that they felt was appropriate. And that took into consideration that, and I think it was, uh, let me find it here, in, in 2021 they projected a population in the city of 200,000. So that's, that seems to be pretty accurate. Um, what, what that translated to was a uh, staff additions for the police department amongst the sworn ranks of somewhere between three and five uh, per fiscal year. Um, and the requisite amount of support staff to support the, the patrol function. Um, so we, we've done that. Um, th this current fiscal year that we began in July, um, if memory serves correctly, I think we added, we added f five sworn positions. Um, so, you know, and, and we've, we've had uh, similar numbers in previous years. They've been, albeit slightly smaller, uh, but the plan going forward is to continue to request uh, that we add probably between three and five sworn positions per year, and again, the requisite amount of support staff. I will state for the record that you know one of the issues that we have with respect to um, staffing is space. Um, I, we, we've talked about this as well, and, and Mr. Champion and I discussed this um, in our meeting also. Um, it, it's it, as we add staff, we have to have some place to put them, um, and so we are we're we're undergoing that analysis right now. The city and the city manager has been very supportive of this, and we've you know we've hired a consultant to look at our space needs. Um, that analysis is underway. In fact, I have a meeting I think tomorrow with 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 the consultant, and so. That's happening as we speak. Um, we, we recognize that as compared to other cities, we have less sworn officers uh, per capita. That's, that's, that's a fact. Um, but the, the, you know, the measure of one per thousand, has, it, that used to be uh, a pretty good measurement. Um, and, and I guess in a, in a, in a real quick you know, thumbnail sketch way, it, it still is to some extent. Uh, but w what we found is we, we, for instance, we make good use of our community service officers. We have 15 CSOs at our department, which is more than a lot of other departments. And I have those numbers here if anybody's interested. But our community service officers, of those 15, 10 are assigned to patrol. And so they're, they're uniformed CSOs. They don't carry guns, but they do go out and they handle reports that keep the gun-toting police officers free and available to respond to crimes in progress and crimes of violence and things of that nature. Um, so the CSOs, we, we, we make more use of CSOs here, which, again, I'm not, I'm not explaining a lower sworn staff in that way. I'm just suggesting that uh, the use of the CSOs does help keep those officers free and able to respond to calls for service. And, you know, I, I just have to say, as your, as your police chief, I've, I've, I've you know, I, I was part of this study. Um, I, I subscribe to this method of growth, especially considering our, our space issues. Um, I agree, and I, I honestly, I, I appreciate it. I've told him this to his face, and I'll say it again. I appreciate Mr. Champion and his support for the department, as well as Mr. Nace. Um, I, I, I'm thankful that we're in a community where people are supportive of us and, and are willing to even come forward and say, hey, we need more police officers. Um, I just am, am, am comfortable, again, as your police chief, with the, the method of growth that we've chosen to, to pursue. Um, and, and um, you know, to do it faster, uh, if, if someone were to wave a wand tonight and say, here, Chief, here's, here's 20 police officers, that's, that might be a little bit more of a, of a curse than a, than a blessing. Um, you know, we have to go out and we have to find those. We have to identify those candidates. We have to recruit them. We have to hire them. We have to send them to an academy. It's, it's about an 18-month process from the moment somebody applies to be a police officer until they get through their academy and field training and, and make it to where we can give them a set of car keys and send them out into the community. Um, and that's only if they make it. 
And so uh, th this, this, this uh, more strategic incremental growth is something that, that, that I'm comfortable with. Uh, but I, but I, again, I don't want to diminish any, any of the community's concerns as it relates to crime. Um, I'm also prepared to speak to that, to the, the aggravated assault question, uh, should it come up. Thank you, Chief. And, and I do want to take the moment to acknowledge, uh, you know, Mr. Champion, I, I also appreciate your sentiment and, and agree uh, that I would love to see more officers too, um, but recognize in concert with, we work in concert with the police chief and the, the study that he talked about, um, his recommendations, the conversations about having facility space so we can house them. All of that plays into, you know, the decision that was made and recommended to this Pre, this past year's budget and what could be the foreseeable budget in the future. I would like to, uh, you know, to Mr. Champion's point though about maybe maybe it just comes back to the ratio co comment because if you do five per year, let's say we said three to five, so if you do five per year for the next six years, that's 30, you got 176 versus what we were talking about, a population of 200,000. And so I'm just going to say it in, in another way, which is it, it sounds like that the, you're, you're using the, the, the CSO officers um, that basically allow the, the efficiency of that 176 officers to look like maybe what would be a 200 officers if you use that one per thousand ratio. Is that... Think yes, I think that's I, I think that's accurate. I, I would just I, I, the CSOs definitely um, um, augment the the uh, the sworn staff considerably. You know, I will say when when the staffing study was was done, uh, they they really they really they, they used a, a an analysis that. And again, I'm a police officer. I'm not a mathematician, so I struggle with with those formulas and things that they use. But they didn't use a one per thousand. They didn't use a, a or a, a, a one per or 0.95 per thousand. They used a a, a formula um, that that looked at response times um, and and kind of the total patrol function um, to reach this recommendation. You know, and I will say in 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 total. Uh, 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 transparency and honesty. I mean, the the recommendation recommendations that were made in the staffing study, we've not been able to keep up with completely. Um, you know, so so we we are you know a, a, a bit in arrears. I would I would say as it relates to that study. And certainly, if it were the desire of the council to 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 reach a 0.95 or something of that nature, we would we would need to ratchet up um, you know our our staff additions going forward. But but I but I'm I'm here to say and again to represent that I'm I'm comfortable with the growth that we've experienced thus far, um, notwithstanding some of the statistics that were presented earlier by the other speaker. Um, you know, our, at, as we speak right now, and this is through September of of this year, as compared to the same time period last year, um, overall persons crimes crimes against persons uh, are down 2.91 percent, almost three percent, and property crime is flat. Um, so. If, if I could have just one moment, if that'd be all right. Um, CSOs, my understanding, are civilians, so that's included. When I brought forth the 2018 statistic of 146 officers plus 86 civilians equals 232 staff. When we compare that number to other cities in the area, so now I'm not talking about comparably sized cities, I'm just talking about in our area. Um, Elk Grove is 1.34 staff per 1,000, and that puts us in the bottom 25% of all similarly, similarly sized cities. But let me read some of these 2016 statistics. Uh, this is total police staff, so I'm not separating out officers right now. Elk Grove uh, in 2016 had 1.24 police staff per 1,000 residents. Roseville had 1.38 per 1,000. Citrus Heights had 1.52 per 1,000. Folsom had 1.22 per 1,000, which notably is the only city that had less overall police staff per 1,000 residents. Lodi had 1.49 police staff per 1,000 residents. Galt, 1.91 per 1,000 residents. Rockland, 1.27 per 1,000 residents. And Sacramento, 1.92 per 1,000 residents. It looks, it looks even worse if we look at just officers. Um, I'm, I'm happy to provide all the data. 
Um, I just created a Facebook page called Elk Grove Residents for Public Safety. I will be posting um, raw data as much as I can so that people can verify my work with open transparency so that we're not encountering any errors due to my part. Um, of note, you know, as I just found out today, we, we have some errors being reported from the Elk Grove Police side. So we really need to take a hard look, and I believe I would like the city council to conduct like some sort of independent staffing study. We need to revalidate the numbers. If we were making decisions in 2016 based off of data that potentially was reported in error, then we don't have a good plan going forward. And my numbers show that we need more police officers. Okay. Uh, Councilman Detrick and then Councilman Hume. Yeah, Nathan, I really appreciate you coming in with all that. And, you know, first of all, we take this very serious. Uh, we've been huge, huge supporters of our police department. Absolutely. You know, there, there's, it's just like every, it's just like your own home. There's certain, you have to, ba it's a balancing act. You know, they're one of our biggest expenditures in our budget. Not, they're worth it, but there's, there's a place where you, you, something's got to give. We don't have enough money to take care of every single part of Elk Grove that we would like to at the highest level. And we have to find a, a level that we can live with within our means. If we had more money that we could cover everything we need to do, we would do it. That's why uh, the vice mayor had proposed a sales tax increase. Well, those are all kinds of things that it, that would be another revenue stream, but we don't have that revenue now. As we have revenue neutrality coming more in our favor, we'll have a little bit more money. Costco going in, a little more money. As these things develop, those things will help the situation. But, uh, Chief, when was the early release uh, by the governor? Prop 47? Yep. What year was that? Oh, that was uh, 15, 16, I would say. Yeah, so 15, 16, you know, we, we saw a bump in some of the crimes because they were turned out of jail, turned out of prison. So, you know, we're, we're trying to adjust for all those things. But as we sit up here, you have other agencies that impact us. School district decided to cut busing for schools. So we had to ramp up our bus system. You know, the school district decided never to build swimming pools. The community comes to us, they want swimming pools. So we've tried to help that. That's been on actually the, the burden of the Laguna Ridge folks with the Melarus fees. They're, they're actually supplemental pain to make that happen. Uh, we talk regularly with the chief on, on what we can do we, we have a, a, a really robust VIP program. Not that they are doing actual police action, but they're t they help take reports. They're out in the community with police on their trucks. They, they do have communication with dispatch. So th there's, there's a lot of different eyes and ears out there. Uh, I think the plan we have right now is something within our means that we, we can live with. Somebody shakes a money tree out there and gets us some more money. We'll see what else we can do. But until then, I think this is the road we're going to have to be on. Uh, these were the same issues in 2006 when Councilman Hume got on the council. These were the same issues in 2008 when I got on the council. We're actually in a better place now than we were 10 years ago. Do we have more to go? Absolutely. But, you know, I can't, you know, as we, we have quite a few officers here tonight. I can't thank them enough for what they do because the quality of life that they help us maintain is is not it's no joke. So, Councilman Hill. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. First of all, Nathan, I I want to thank you and Mr. Nays for coming out here. Uh, to the Chief's point, I think it's wonderful that we live in a community where the people want more police, more law enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, that's a testament to to the Elk Grove. Um, to Councilmember Detrick's point, we spend almost 60% of our general fund budget, which is our only discretionary uh, spending on our police department and, and associated uh, equipment and, and services and such. We are um, trying to find more space, which is one of the constraints that the chief uh, listed. 
Um, we are uh, trying to right size the department in a, in a manageable way so that as these officers are onboarded, they have the correct amount of training, uh, that the uh, overall function of the department continues to, to work well and, and you don't all of a sudden have 20 new faces roaming the halls and nobody knows who they are. Um, I think we do need to go back and scrub our data and put it through that, that matrix and see uh, what comes out and then see if that radically alters our plan. I think uh, you would do well to um, listen to what the chief's saying, that, uh, that that one per thousand metric is a little outdated and that there are other metrics that we can use to, uh, to determine whether or not our, our, our police department is, is functioning efficiently, uh, perhaps doing more with less. Um, but here's the, here's the deal, uh, that I'll make this commitment to you. If the chief comes to me tomorrow and says, look, I gotta ramp up our staffing by two extra officers, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll find that money. I'll, I'll, you know, we'll work to do that. You're here. So we're all on the same page with wanting the outcome, which is keeping our community safe. And I, I appreciate you being diligent about, about that as well. I know you had a very unfortunate incident in your neighborhood, which kind of raised the specter uh, and got you maybe a little bit fired up about it. So um, thank you for sticking with it. Vice Mayor. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing that like, um, Councilman Hume said, is, which is, um, Chief, if you want to take another look and you find that after you know since 2016 you're seeing something different you know please let us know and i'm with councilman Hume. i, I would adopt that in a heartbeat that recommendation I, um there's a um but there is i think what you know i think all of us have seen you know whether it's on next door or you know there's a lot of um people talking about when when you have car break-ins or or things like that and and i think there is there's concern um some concern in the community and so I also want to um, you know talk about is if, if not more officers right now I mean what can we do and I'm, I guess I'm gonna ask you chief what can we do as as a community uh, and whether it's us on the dais or or outreach into the community to um, you know make things safer I mean we've been talking about building a stronger community Having events to get, have get communities, you know, have build that closer bond. But is there anything more that we can do if besides adding officers? Well, that's a that's a great question. I and I, truthfully, I think we're on a good path with that. Um, you, you know, look, we're 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 here in a public meeting tonight, and we're having public comment from two residents who care enough about their community that they've come in to talk about it. And we're having a prolonged discussion about public safety in Elk Grove. That's a good thing. I don't see that. In fact, I, I've, I've told him before, I, I, I view Mr. Champion as an ally, not, not an adversary. No, absolutely. I, I greatly appreciate his support. So I think the fact that we're talking about it, our, our, our neighborhood watch system is robust. You know, we continue to look for ways to expand that. Uh, you all, as a, as a group of elected officials, are very supportive of our efforts. Um, I, I, I know you work very hard in the community to, to, uh, to uh, remind folks to be mindful of, of public safety. So I think that th those parts are all good. To be honest, I think there are some things that we're looking to do, and I'm just going to, I'll touch on this briefly so as not to prolong the discussion for too long. Um, but we, you know, we, we're, we're looking at how we do business as well, internal to the police department. We've recently hired, and this was a, this was a result of a staffing study recommendation um, from that 2016 study, uh, but we've recently added a second crime analyst. Um, and, and the reason we did that is because I, I, what, what I'm really looking for and what we're driving internally and we're talking to our managers and supervisors about is, is uh, ensuring that we have a, a, a really robust uh, system of crime analysis and data that we're able to provide very timely data to the officers so that they are, they are very much aware of what's going on at a neighborhood level within the city. Often when we talk about crime rates, we're talking about aggregate crime rates throughout the city as a whole. What we're really trying to drive is, is more geographic um, accountability, if you will, um, from our staff so that they not only have an awareness of what's going on in the various neighborhoods and the beats that they work, on a very micro level, um, but that we're providing them with the data and the support internally, and we align our systems to support those efforts in the field. Um, that's a 
that sounds like a very nebulous concept, I realize, but it's, 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 it's very doable. And, and frankly, you know, as we're about 12 years into our existence, I guess, here as a police department, so that makes us relatively new, and I even admitted this to Mr. Champion when we met. Um, I, you know, we, we do pretty well with what we have, um, but I think that we can do better, we, even with the systems that we have in place now. And, and I'm, I'm laying a lot on this new crime analyst. I don't mean to, uh, but she's very dynamic and she's very good at what she does. And I think uh, between, at, between that staff addition and really looking at our, our systems and how we deliver data and what our expectations are of our staff in the field, um, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that, 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 that that's going to have a, a real impact on, on crime in the city as well. And all the while, if we continue to add staff at whatever rate we are all comfortable with and we decide, um, I, I think those things in concert, along with having a, a really engaged community, uh, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to be okay. Uh, we, we, we're, I, I feel like we're on a good path. I, outside of sharing that, you know, that crime analysis information with you, I really, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to think of something else that I could ask you to do or ask the community to do other than just stay together, stay plugged in. Uh, that's what community policing is all about. We can't do it by ourselves. We need Mr. Champion and we need his neighbors and, and Mr. Nays and his neighbors to work with us uh, to make the city as, as safe as possible. So, Chief, how does technology uh, enter into the equation now? Well, it, in a lot of ways. I mean, um, you know, often when we think about technology, we think about video uh, cameras. Um, we've had some discussions recently about, about video um, in placement of cameras in the city. Um, and, and frankly, we would like to expand uh, the number of cameras in the city, but what we're up against now are network issues um, and, and basically, you know, kind of a bandwidth issue, if you will. And so we're, we're working we've, with our IT administrator and other staff to try to figure out a way because we could continue to add cameras, but if we don't have the network ability to, to, to weave them together and bring that here uh, for us to be able to utilize, then they really, they're, they're just props out there. And so we need to find a way to do that. So we're working on that. That's one piece of technology. I think as we move down this enhanced crime analysis path, uh, we're going to be looked to develop some, some internal, some dashboards, probably some apps even for our officers' smartphones for them to be able to really quickly be able to pull up the data that they need to be more efficient in the field. Um, so, that's just a I couple of things. Question. Actually, uh, real quick, before you answer that question, while I got on my mind, because you know both of you have taken such time to, to come here and into data, so I, I want to... I want to find an action for you that, that we can, you know, um, get, get behind. And so if my council colleagues would agree with me, I would request that the chief take, you know, take some time to go back, relook at the numbers, like kind of what we talked about, the data, and do an all-encompassing uh, review of if there's anything at the moment. If it's, in other words, we just talked about the, the, the expanding the, the data. Um, you know whether it's fiber or whatever, come back with those recommendations or com that you know that we can we can look at and, and whether we adopt it or we're able to adopt it due to you know our budget today or not, we at least know what we want to do in the future and we have a we have a plan. And while I have it on my mind, I was reminded you know a lot of folks talk about what when I when I talk in the community, they just want to see a patrol car once in a while come by, and so you know how that can happen. It, it might be a C more CSOs or, you know, um, or somebody driving the, just driving the car, <laughs> frankly. So, whatever it would take to make that happen, that might be worthwhile to take a look at as well. So let me suggest this. Um, I hear what you're saying, Vice Mayor. Uh, can we just uh, have a consensus to bring this back uh, to Council? Uh, have a, as an, an uh, informative uh, information item. Um, I, I would be, uh, you know, content with that. Uh, we're going to be talking all night long, uh, and this is above and beyond. I'm very grateful that you're here. Uh, the information that you provide is very informative. Um, but at the same time, we need to be able to um, contrast with what the chief has to say. And the truth of it is that we are going to rely on the, the recommendation of our, um, you know, top cop. And uh, he's saying he's comfortable at this point. In an ideal world, yes, we would like more officers. We want more protection. Um, I would love to have a police officer at every door, uh, but the reality of that we have is that we have a limited resources, and there's a balancing act, as you heard from many of the council members. So, uh, if there's a consensus, I would love to see something come back. Yeah, that, that's uh, not. Uh, 
and that's what we're we're talking about suggestion bringing it back right okay. yeah. yeah so let's let's do that um, and uh, thank you sir thank you uh, so let's just go ahead and do that and um, your time is obviously up our next speaker is Roberta Roberta Lowe Taylor I gave you all copies of what I was suggesting as an agenda, basically an ordinance for the city of Elk Grove. I'd like to do this in conjunction with our safety of our Elk Grove officers, the fire department, the EMTs. What we're having is a problem with a lot of times, and this is where Nathan and Mr. Nathan, with rentals that we have here on the property, because we don't know who lives there, we don't know who that person is. So to make a city ordinance that puts that name of that person on there so that when the dispatcher gets it, the owner comes up, the renter comes up. They can go then go through the CLETS system, which I think, you, are you all familiar with CLETS? The crime, you know, it's a, I'm sorry, my IT person, so I do that. I worked at DMV, that horrible place, but I worked with the, with the <laughs> I know, go ahead and laugh. But I know that the chief knows I work with CLETS, which is what the law enforcement uses to get all the wants and wars out for all the bad people. So when they go out there on a, Call, they know exactly what they're coming up against. So with this proposal, it would give them the opportunity and our fire department and our EMTs know what they're going to be coming up against when they go for little different calls and all. And so I'd like to take that into consideration and I would hope it would help out Mr. Nathan, Nathan also with that they needed to know because this also helps out in neighborhoods because I know I'm saying imposing a fine but the fine can be used to staff our more Elk Grove PD because the fact that they have to go out there, you know, multiple times because of a renter. So this way it imposes a fine on them that the owner has to pay to Elk Grove City because we've had to go above and beyond what we normally have to do. And I am going to be very quick because my poor husband is waiting for his dinner. <laughs> and I can, um, as far as, as a side joke, you uh, want more space, can't we just take Howard Hughes as a little on <laughs> out there and use that for a new police department. But I'd really like you all to take, do you all have a copy of this? Yes. And take this into consideration and um, I can email each one of you my email. I've gone over some of this with a relative of mine who um, I'll explain it's a federal, San Francisco federal judge as to what I could or could not put on here. But I still think our city attorneys need to go through this and see what our laws are here in conjunction of this can be also incorporated in the, our ordinances here. Any questions or thoughts? No, thank you. Roberta, you can... th thank you for coming in and you've been here for at least almost two hours. So from DMV, that's probably a short line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm retired. I am retired. I didn't do that. I did the good computer system update and gave them the data so they could go ahead and update all the computers and they lost they didn't lose they chose to throw it away because the fact that they felt we, we were outdated as retirees wow so no i made the good and i saved the state of california 1.2 million dollars with that computer upgrade wow thank you roberta you can give a copy to the city attorney that'd be great next speaker is alana um our curio uh following alana is uh, anthony cooper Hello, thank you everybody. Uh, I think I came before you a year ago and it was not good circumstances. I can't believe it's been about a year, but the city was facing some very challenging uh, racial incidents. And so I'm glad today earlier with the disability recognition as well as the multicultural <coughs> committee to see that there have been some strides to create a more positive and inclusive community. But then I also wanted to just check in. I know that ALF presented a report and to see um, what has been done in the interim and how are we uh, working towards specifically ensuring that we keep this a place that's no place for hate. Thank you. I'll take my answer here. <laughs> so thank you very much. I think if Kev, you can connect with her um, on the report. We've already heard it on council. So there's some action that we've recommended. Uh, and if you could get the update from Kev, that'd be great. Um, hey, Mayor, I did, but I just want to acknowledge uh, Alana, um, and I know you were out of the country at that time, but Alana, 
um, was our facilitator for that day. So um, it's good to see you again. Thank you for your service back then. I will just say a quick note. We talked to, we mentioned the, in the, uh, the multicultural committee that they, uh, they too have gone through the, the implicit bias training and we're attempting to spread that out broadly, more broadly to the community. So I'll just add that real quick. Thank you. Okay, Anthony Cooper is our next speaker following Anthony is Michael Manaski. Uh, 